Hello, and welcome to Farm Traveler, where we're actually not at a farm this week. We're at my coffee table, but there's a plant, so that still kind of counts, right? At least I hope it does. So today, we're going to talk about aquaponics versus hydroponics, and both how they kind of relate to aquaculture. But first, there's a plant and two little fish. Ha. Huh. You've probably heard of sustainable... Oh, that marker is really terrible. You've probably heard of sustainable agriculture, which is the production of food, fiber, and other plant and animal products using farming techniques to help protect the environment. Things like preventing soil erosion and conserving water are great examples. But this drawing of the earth is not a good example. Sorry. See, it's like... I mean, South America's kind of cut in half. Sorry. The first process we're going to talk about is aquaculture, which is the process of farming fish and other crustaceans or aquatic plants, basically like using a giant tank. Using tanks, ponds, or even large pens, farmers maintain a healthy environment for the fish to grow. In this example, the fish are raised and they're fed, and then this giant filter filters out all the stuff, like the poo, from the fish and returns good clean water. So the good thing about fish is that they are among the most efficient in terms of feed conversion. This chart will represent how many pounds of feed an animal has to eat in order to gain one pound of body mass. Fish only need to eat 1.1 pounds of food to gain one pound of body mass. Chickens require 1.7 pounds of feed. Pigs require 2.9 pounds. And cows require almost seven pounds of feed to gain one pound of body mass. Now, one of the main reasons of this is because fish are endothermic, meaning they rely on the environment to help them regulate their own body heat. The next process is hydroponics, or the process of growing plants in water without the use of soil. Regular plants grow in the soil where the ground provides both structure and nutrients for the plant. With hydroponics, plants are supported with variety types of growth media, including clay pebbles, sand, or even just sponges. These types of growing media allow water to flow freely around the plant's roots to bring them nutrients while also creating a stable structure for the plant. The nutrients are added to the water via fertilizers and the grower can have the precise control of what the nutrients in the water are. There is even an offshoot of hydroponics called aeroponics where the plants and their roots are suspended in the air. With this process, plenty of oxygen is provided for the plants and they receive nutrients from a nutrient solution delivered from a mister. Like the mechanical mister, not a mister mister. Hydroponics is also much more efficient than typical row crops. With a hydroponic system, the water is closed off from the outside environment and won't be lost due to erosion, and only a small amount will be lost due to evaporation. A large percentage of water for row crops is lost due to evaporation and erosion. And also, hydroponics can be grown year-round because most of the facilities are indoors, while row crops definitely have seasons. Also a big win for hydroponics is that compared to row crops, hydroponics save 70% more water over the life cycle of the plant. Another win for hydroponics in terms of sustainable agriculture. With hydroponics and even aeroponics, the water must maintain a steady pH level or the measure of acidity and alkalinity of the water that affects nutrient absorption. If the pH is too high or too low, the plant won't be able to absorb the nutrients it needs. If the pH at a level 10, for example, there are only a small amounts of nitrogen present, but there's large levels of sulfur or boron. The ideal level where all nutrients are available in good supply is around 7 on pH scale. If you don't watch out, your plant will die, so be careful. And that's an I, I promise. The culmination of aquaculture and hydroponics is aquaponics, ding ding ding, or the process of raising both fish and plants in one system. So the plants are grown in much the same manner as with a hydroponic system. Hang on, let me finish up this really long pipe, and there we go. So with the hydroponic system, the plants receive their nutrients from the water from the fish tank that is full of waste, and that acts as a natural fertilizer for the plants. As for the fish, when they're fed, they produce waste, of course. The wastewater is then pumped towards the plants where the roots absorb the nutrients and act as a natural filter for the fish, filtering out all the waste and returning fresh, clean water to the tank. So the fish get a free filter and the plants get free food. Win-win. Now, most aquaponic systems cost a pretty penny, but you can buy a similar system at most stores or make your own. Get a fish tank with a betta fish, yeah, sorry, drawing's hard, and you can have a simple herb garden and a fish tank. Boom, you're set. 
All of this can be of great use to the environment. Now let's see how this world turns out and still sorry to the people of South America. By the year 2050, the population is going to be 9 billion people and that's going to be a lot more mouths to feed. The solution to this problem is definitely going to be sustainable agriculture with the inclusion of the methods hydroponics, aquaponics, and aquaculture. So stay tuned for more and we'll tell you all about it. Thank you so much for watching our video here on Farm Traveler. Please be sure to check out our Instagram page at farm underscore traveler, our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the farm traveler, don't forget the the, and then our YouTube at the farm traveler. See you guys later. Oh, wait, also don't forget our website. I mean, it's 2018, everybody has a website now. Don't forget to go to www. I mean, honestly, who even says www anymore? Go to farmtraveler.wordpress.com and we will see you guys later. Mm -hmm.